Parents will do anything for their young. In our final episode, we explore life after sex, the young ones. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you, your local gas company and America's natural gas industry, fueling vehicles for a cleaner environment. And by Canon, quality and innovation for the way we work and live. Canon. Parenting, perhaps the most difficult job there is. Young primates, like this chimpanzee, need a lot of attention and require years of feeding, nurturing, and protecting. These young ones will have a long childhood. It's a time for practicing new skills, for learning social behavior, and for mischief. A baby chimp is practically helpless and totally dependent on its mother. For its first two years, the pair is inseparable. <coughs> Providing nourishment from her own body is just a small part of a mother's responsibility. Just as important to this youngster is support and guidance. A young chimp has a great deal to learn before it can survive on its own. It starts by observing its mother and other adults. They've mastered a skill that takes years to perfect, cracking nuts. Nutcracking is not instinctual. This skill must be learned and passed on from one generation to the next. This complex behavior involves the use of tools, a rock as a hammer, a hard surface as an anvil. Cracking nuts is only one of many survival skills needed in this jungle. And an education is one of the most important things that a chimp parent can give to its offspring. But animals which need such intense child care are rare. Many animals are orphans from birth. squid during their annual migration off the coast of California. This is where adults meet their mates.
After mating, the females produce large capsules, each containing hundreds of eggs. Squid parents use the strategy of numbers when it comes to passing on their genes. Instead of raising a few young over a lifetime, they have thousands of offspring at once. Most of the eggs will be lost to predators, but chances are a few will survive. For a squid, this is not only the end of its parental role, it's the end of its life. After the eggs are laid, the parents die on the ocean floor. Parental roles and strategies are as varied as the animals themselves. For many species, one of the biggest responsibilities is feeding. Some animals are born with the ability to feed themselves, and some are born begging. These pileated woodpecker chicks keep their parents busy hunting for insects and ferrying them back to the nest. The chick's cries and gaping mouths stimulate the parents to feed them. A cleverly designed nest enables both parents to feed their young simultaneously. Providing a constant supply of food is hard work. The parents become little more than feeding machines. But it's time and energy well spent. This is their one chance to get them off to a good start. Once the chicks learn how to fly, they are on their own. Most fish let their offspring fend for themselves after hatching, but these discus fish care for their young, and in a very odd way. These fry are eating off their parents' bodies, consuming a slimy but nutritious substance exuded from their skin. This method of feeding has an added advantage. It's a very economical way of providing food and shelter because the youngsters stick close by their parents in case they get hungry. In Australia, baby food comes in an even more bizarre form. These are bulldog ants. Above ground, they're aggressive hunters that kill other insects with a potent sting. But below the surface, they are gentle, attentive parents. This is the nursery. Here, the developing larvae are under constant guard. They're routinely checked and cleaned. All the larvae come from eggs laid by the queen, but there are other kinds of eggs that have a very unconventional purpose.
This female has just produced an egg, but it's not quite like a normal egg and would never develop into an ant. It's called a trophic egg, and its purpose is not for reproduction, but for nourishment. It's fed to the larvae. In some species of ants, the eggs fuse together into what, believe it or not, is called a trophic omelet. The colony consists mainly of infertile females, and they're all sisters. So even though she cannot have offspring of her own, she can help her sisters by feeding them. When it comes to feeding, no animal goes to greater extremes than the female Amarobius spider. Her spiderlings have just hatched, but before feeding them, she first needs to have a meal herself. But this fly is not really for her, it's for her offspring, although she won't be feeding it to them directly. When she's had her fill, she crawls away and dies. This is how she feeds her offspring with her own body. She has made the ultimate sacrifice for her young. Mammals have their own way of providing nutrients from their bodies. And in Australia, there are unusual kinds of mammals. This is a bandicoot, a marsupial, and she's just given birth to an embryo. The embryo is only about two weeks old, smaller than a dime, and weighs in at less than one hundredth of an ounce. Its mother doesn't have a womb, the developing embryo has to leave her body, then find its way back in again, into her pouch. Once it's found its way there, it will be warm, well protected, and well fed. All mammals produce milk for their infants, but marsupials begin drinking milk as embryos. They cannot see or move very much, but they know how to hang on and how to suckle. For weeks, mother's milk is all they know. In wild dog societies, only one female breeds, the dominant female of the pack. A cry is heard from nearby. One of the pups is stuck in the den. Since the members of the pack are all closely related, 
The adults share some genes with the pups, and they all help mom raise them. An older sister attempts a rescue. The mother continues to nurse, but she stays attuned to the situation in case she's needed. The helper is desperately trying to find the pup trapped below, but to no avail. Mom will have to take care of this herself. She's a more efficient digger, and the pup is found, a little shaken, but unharmed. Feeding is only one small part of raising offspring. Protection is just as important because it's very dangerous to be young. African Quelia. These birds gather in huge flocks, forming a cloud above the plains, hence their nickname, the Feathered Swarm. For many animals, nests provide protection for their young ones. Most birds build their nests in trees, high above many of their predators. But just when you thought it was safe to come home, Marabou storks have discovered a large breeding colony and are treated to a feast. The shrike, also known as the butcher bird, got its nickname from its grisly feeding habits, using thorns to skewer its prey. In the case of the quelia, predators may hardly make a dent in the size of a flock. Many parents will have a successful year, in spite of the nest robbers. In the Arizona desert, a mother bee has finished preparing an egg chamber. She's provided food for her progeny in a giant pollen ball but danger lurks just outside this cozy hideaway. After the bees have gone, the flies move in. They hover over the bee chambers, take aim and fire. The bombers are female bee flies, and their ammunition is their own eggs.
The fly larvae are tiny compared to that of the bee, but sometimes danger comes in small packages. The flies attach themselves to the bee. Then these parasites begin to feed. As the bee eats the pollen, the fly eats the bee. Even in a bomb shelter, there's no guarantee of safety. Sometimes danger can come from within a youngster's own family. This is not just simple sibling rivalry. It's a serious battle for survival. Both parents hunt for food, but usually they can only provide enough for one chick. The older eaglet is trying to eliminate the competition. Eagles lay their eggs at different times, so one chick is older and stronger. Unless food is extremely plentiful, the older chick will usually kill its brother or sister in order to get enough to eat. That is an individual's first imperative, to survive. Even, as in this case, if it means killing his own sibling. As cruel as this may seem to us, if one eaglet didn't kill the other, both would probably die from starvation. In that scenario, the parent's genetic score would be zero. The African Plains, here where predators roam night and day, no mother can be sure what she's coming home to. This cheetah mother has hidden her cubs among some rocks. When she returns to the den, she finds a disturbing surprise. If the lioness finds her cubs, it will probably kill them. There's nothing she can do. She's anxious to get to the den. Have some of her cubs survived? No one knows why lions kill cheetah cubs. Perhaps they're seen as competition for food. At last, the lioness leaves and the mother can finally reach the den. All the cubs have been killed, but she refuses to abandon them. The bond between a mother and her young is not easily broken. carries one of the dead cubs with her and brings it into the light of the African morning. Protection is one of a parent's most crucial responsibilities. For jacanas, it's the male that has most of the parental duties. 
Jacanas have male harems, a very rare mating system. One female mates with many males and leaves each of them in charge of a clutch of eggs. This can be a tough job, especially when the nest is discovered by thieves. Many jacanas lose their entire clutch to water snakes patrolling the marsh. Protecting the eggs against predators requires a good deal of courage and sometimes a bit of acting. The male pretends to be injured to lure the snake towards himself, risking his own life to save his family. It's the old broken wing trick. And it's worked again. The snake has been diverted. He returns to the nest to make repairs. Jacana eggs don't sink like most bird eggs. They float. So even though the nest was disturbed, all the male has to do is gather them up. The father's brave rescue is rewarded. All the eggs have survived the ordeal. Some animals protect their young by putting them in daycare. Greater flamingos live in enormous flocks. The adults take advantage of the fact that it only takes a few eyes to watch over a large group of young. These chicks are old enough to leave the nest, but they're too young to feed themselves. While their parents forage, the chicks stay with a babysitter in a large communal nursery. A tight-knit group, they move back and forth in sync, as if they were one. As evening approaches, the parents return. A huge throng of hungry chicks has been waiting for them. Each youngster finds its parents by recognizing their calls as they search through the mob. Sometimes young ones can be left unsupervised, if they're in the right location. In Israel, ibex, relatives of the mountain goat, live where few other animals could survive. There isn't much grazing here, but ibex can search everywhere for food. Well, almost everywhere. 
These kids are truly home alone. Precarious cliffs are their only protection. Their mothers come and go during the day, returning to find their own young and nurse them. They choose a place so inaccessible that even they have trouble getting there. The kids cannot leave until they've perfected their rock climbing skills. Youngsters will need to be sure-footed when they head out onto this terrain. Finally, this mother is ready to take her kids out of daycare. It's one small step for mom, but one giant leap for her young ones. She waits patiently for them to muster the courage. Now they can explore their vertical world. Wildebeest don't hide their young in a place, but in a crowd. Hundreds of thousands of wildebeest migrate together and calve together. A baby boom on the Serengeti Plains. For the youngsters, there's safety in numbers. But the newborn's greatest protection comes from its instinct to stay glued to its mother's side. This calf has lost its mother. It stands alone. With no one to guide it, it walks away from the herd. A wildebeest without a herd is an open invitation. The bond between mother and child is one of the most powerful and long-lasting emotions in nature.
These vultures have found a dead zebra foal, but its mother won't leave it. She stands guard over the body to keep the scavengers away. Eventually, she accepts the loss and lets go. Young prey animals have to learn how to escape. Young predators have to learn how to hunt. These adolescent cheetahs are still being taught the fundamentals. Their mother has her eye on a young Thompson's gazelle. Her cubs are playing instead of watching. Finally, they catch on. The fawn's instinct is to freeze and lay low. The cubs know how to stalk, but they don't yet know how to kill. Their mother does not interfere. The only way they'll learn is by experience. A hyena waits to see if they're successful. These novices don't know what to do with the fawn but their mother gives them some more time to figure it out. She helps them by chasing off the threatening hyena. Eventually, the cubs make the kill together. Their mother, after months of providing food for them, now gets a share of their spoils. Elephant mothers invest a great deal in their young even before they're born. It took 22 months of pregnancy to produce this calf.
Childhood lasts for more than a decade. This helps prepare a young elephant for a life in one of the most complex and closely knit societies in the animal kingdom. They don't even stop suckling until they're about five years old, long after they can feed themselves. This is part of the long process of forming family bonds. In the first few months of its life, the calf is seldom more than a few feet away from its mother. Its main activities are suckling and resting. An elephant calf is born into a nurturing, loving world. Raising the young is a group effort. Most of the adults are relatives, sisters, brothers, aunts, and cousins. Helping any of the youngsters makes good genetic sense. Yet, just because there are biological bonds doesn't in any way belittle the emotional ones. Elephant family ties are powerful. For many animals, it's just fun to be young. A young orangutan explores the treetops of Indonesia. Orangutans live their entire lives in trees. Many behaviors that might seem instinctual, like climbing, have to be learned by trial and error and by observing mother. These youngsters grow very slowly. For the first four years, they rely on their mother for food, protection, cleaning, and encouragement. They spend this time in intense training, for soon they will be totally on their own. Orangutans live a solitary life. They must learn what foods to eat, how to recognize and escape from predators, and how to behave when they encounter other orangutans.
Primates have an instinctual fear of snakes, but they also have an insatiable curiosity. And we have the longest childhood of all. Help me! Humans have the most complex brains, which need the longest education. And of all animals, human children require the greatest amount of time and energy from their parents. Each culture has its own set of rules that dictates the type of information and survival skills that a child must learn. For pygmy youngsters in Africa, practice with a bow and arrow is an essential part of their education. Developing proper social behavior is just as important as developing hunting skills. Human children develop intricate games, and through these they learn about personal relationships, the complexities of their society, and about themselves. In all societies, there's usually a set time when childhood ends and adulthood begins. For the Maasai people of East Africa, that transition is punctuated and celebrated with the Unoto ceremony. It's performed when the young tribesmen, called warriors, are ready to assume adult responsibilities, including the right to marry. The mother is given an honored role. She shaves off her son's long hair, a symbol of his changing position in the community. Mm. 
At the close of the ceremony, all the young men gather together to be blessed by the elders. All cultures create occasions for the big moments in an individual's life. It's a way to commemorate the passage from one phase to another on the long road from infancy to old age. In many Western cultures, there's also a ceremony which marks the end of childhood, the high school graduation. In New York City, friends and family gather to greet the new graduates after they receive their diplomas. This high school graduation marks a turning point for these young men and women. And for their parents, this occasion symbolizes what all their hard work was about. Not just passing on their genes, but getting their children started on life's journey. For every parent, human and otherwise, the culmination of all their courting, nurturing, fighting, and even dying for sex comes when their children reach independence. The end of childhood occurs at different times for different animals. Graduates about to embark on their future, a young lioness making her first kill, an eaglet leaving the nest. It's time for one generation to let go and another to begin the process all over again. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. Your local gas company and America's natural gas industry. Fueling power plants for a cleaner environment. And by Canon. Quality and innovation for the way we work and live. Canon.